Hello, this is Ray Main here again with today's Bible reading. Today we're going to be reading in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languisheth. They are black under the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth. The plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Yea, the hind also calved in the field and forsook it because there was no grass. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake. For our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. O the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land, and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Thus saith the Lord unto this people, Thus have they loved to wander, they have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity, and visit their sins. Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, You shall not see the sword, neither shall you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury them them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them, Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain with the sword, and if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine, yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they know not. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us, and there is no healing for us? We look for peace, and there is no good. And for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness, and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disguise the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Are not thou he, O Lord our God? Therefore we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. Well, once again, in this chapter, he's telling uh, some of the things that's going to come against the children of Israel because of their whoredom, because of their idol worship, because they're not obeying the commandments of God. Jeremiah at the end is saying, God, you're the only God. You know, there's no other gods out here that can do the things that you do. Think about that. You know, he's talking about pastors. They're talking about prophets that are that are prophesying, and the Lord didn't send them to prophesy. He said, well, that was back there. I'll tell you what, you need to pray that the Lord would open your ears so that you could hear what is being said today because I'm pro I'm going to prophesy to you right now that there are many false prophets in this day and time as well and they are only in uh, talking about God they are only in the business not of serving God not of serving God's people but of serving themselves they have made a business out of it folks stop and think about it why would some of these preachers need why would they need 
three to four airplanes, a dozen cars, four or five houses, whenever they're supposed to be doing working for God, and they're turning around and telling poor people, they're telling poor people that God has blessed them, and if you'll just send your money to me, God will bless you the same way. Folks, that's not right. That is not right. Pretty clear presentation here of what's going to happen to them. Sad part is it's going to happen to the people that listen to them as well. Does that mean that a preacher or a prophet shouldn't have wealth? That it that if they have wealth, if they if they're rich, if they have money, if they don't have any needs at all, that they're a false prophet? Of course not. Of course not. All I'm doing is telling you to do your research. Do your prayer. Don't take them at face value. There's a lot of people that are being led down the wrong paths. Don't put your trust in man. Put it in God. Are you supposed to be in a place of worship? Are you supposed to be under a man of God as far as in a ministry? Yes, I believe that's the order of God. But folks, be careful. A lot of people are entering into prison houses and they're doing it joyfully. We're on a journey. Make sure you want to go with the people that you're going with. God bless you. Hope you have a blessed day. We'll talk to you next time.